falls down and a lady that hangs out on the bad side of town. Next thing you know, she gets in the limousine. I actually sold a limousine not that long ago. Big 79 Cadillac limousine, air ride, big wheels. It was built back in the 90s. This thing, I mean, it's just wild. And I was so sold it to a guy. It's his very first collector car, very first old car, specialty car, or whatever. And he called me up, and, and this kid was so excited about this thing. He goes, if that car is less than 23 feet long, I'm going to buy it. So what do I do? I come running outside of the warehouse with a measuring tape. 21 foot and 9 inches. Sold. He bought it. And he came down from Virginia to pick it up. And me and him got to talking. And got talking about limousines and just talking about cars in general. And it hit me. So this is many, 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 many moons ago. Back when the rabbit was a mere bunny. My grandfather passed away in 2001. He loved Cadillacs. I love Cadillacs. We're a Cadillac family. My mother drives a Cadillac, you know. Girlfriends drove Cadillacs. Wives drove Cadillacs. I mean, just Cadillacs are a thing. Hell, my camera guy's girlfriend drives a Cadillac because of me. I mean, we just like six ducks up in Greenville. That's just how I roll. And they're an easy sale. And not to get off tangent talking about Cadillacs, but this is a funny side story. I had a good friend of mine come up to me. He goes, man, I'm looking for a nice luxury car. And he said, I've been looking at those 300 Cs. I said, Richard, I have a question for you. When you want something, and it's the best of something, and you want that, how would you describe it? Would it be the... 300 Chrysler of something? He said, no, it'd be the Cadillac. I said, you're right. I said, you ever thought about getting a Cadillac? Man, I don't think I'd like a Cadillac. I said, you ought to look at a Cadillac. I have sold more new Cadillacs. I should be on commission for General Motors. I've sold more new Cadillacs for free. I said, this is the thing at the end of the day. If you're going to have a car payment and when you buy a new car, you're all excited about it. I don't give a damn if it's a new Kia or if it's a Lamborghini. It's your new car. And you get to work that day. Hey, where's your new car at? Oh, it's the green Kia Soul over here in the back corner. No. What's your new car? That black caddy outside. Instantly, they're going to know what it is. You know, and there's something about, you know, when you're on your lunch break eating a pack of crackers because you're trying to save money to make that car payment, and you're sitting in your car, and you're looking at a wood grain wheel with that Cadillac crest in front of you, and pack of crackers ain't half bad. It just tastes better. It's kind of like them fancy cookies on the plane they give you in first class. They're just better. But, moving on. My grandfather, when he passed, he bought a Cadillac Sedan DeVille Concours for my grandmother to drive. A year or two after he passed, she decided she wanted to get her a new car or something smaller. This Cadillac had no miles on it, and he bought it out of Texas. The car actually had a salvage title on it. No, Ed, it's already gone, buddy. You can sit down. But it had a salvage title. And uh, it was stolen recovery, but super nice car. I mean, obviously, my grandmother drove it for two years in you know, church and literally the grocery store straight up this time. So anyway, she went to go trade this car in, you know, at, at the dealership. And you know, they didn't want to give her nothing for it, obviously, because it has salvage tile and all this stuff. And, and she called me up and she said, do you think this is a good deal? I'm like, hell no, that ain't a good deal. I said, I'll tell you what, I gave her $1,000 more than what they offered for it. And I ended up with the car. You know, my first wife drove it for a little while. And she didn't like it because she didn't want to drive a big Cadillac around. I loved it. So I stuck it online for sale. I met a really interesting character. A guy came and looked at it. And for the sake of story, we're going to call him Jim. He came and looked at it. He said, man, it's a good-looking Cadillac. Had 17-inch, which were big at the time, chrome wheels on him. It was just a beautiful Cadillac. He goes, man, I really like this car a lot. And I explained to him the salvage title part. And he really wasn't too concerned with that. And we drove it up the road. And he paid me for it in cash. And, you know, when you do car deals with people, just like, like I'm telling a story to this kid that bought this limousine, you know, you talk, you get to know people, you know, and what do you do for a living, Jim? He said, I'm a limo driver. I can understand. He was wearing a suit and he dressed nice. I said, really? I said, how long have you been driving a limo? He said, for a few years. He said, I own my own limo company. Really? And I said, you know, I mean, I've seen limousine companies with several limos and those guys do all right. But I said, one limo, he made pretty good money with it. He goes, yeah, but I don't use it like a regular limo. Well, now I'm intrigued. I want to know more. 
So we're sitting there and I'm just like, so tell me about this limo. He goes, you really want to know? I said, yeah. He goes, well, I started my limousine service. I got the bright idea I was going to buy a limo and go into business for myself. I've never drove a limousine in my life. He bought a Lincoln Town Car Stretch. And he goes, I would go, literally had ads in the paper and things like that. And he said, you know, prom season, it was great. After that, everybody called the big limo companies. You know, I couldn't advertise like they do. He said, so what I do is I'd go to a big bar in town or something like that. And I'd park out front and buy somebody might want to take a limousine home, you know, make a few hundred bucks. And he goes, I had a guy one night while I was at a bar. And he said, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't doing that great. You know, been a little slow. Damn Uber. Well, it's actually this way before Uber. But anyway, he said, I had a guy approach me and he goes, you ever thought about doing some work, subbing out and doing some work for me? And he goes, well, I mean, I guess I could do a private rental or something like that. And he goes, it ain't like that. He said, here's my card. Give me a call tomorrow. I'd love to sit down and talk with you about it. And he just left. And the guy's card, he was a private investigator. So anyway, he goes and meets the guy. And um, and they talk. And, and he goes, you know, I'll send you out. You pick a client up. You take them wherever they want to go. Do whatever they want to do. And you drop them off. But he said, if I send you out, I want you to get that client. No matter what, you get him in that car. And he said, because obviously, he said, whatever you got to tell them to get in that car, you tell them. And you take them from there, and you'll be compensated well. And he said, sometimes I'll need you a few times a week. Sometimes I might need you once a month. And he said, I'll call you. He said, but when I call you, I need you there. And eh, whatever. He said, I didn't think that much about it. A little time comes by, gets a phone call. He says, hey, bring your limo by. Brings his limo by, and there's guys standing there. Next thing you know, he gets out. He says, I'm going to give you $5,000 to go to this bar, pick this guy. He showed him a picture. The guy actually gave it to him a picture. He said, I pick this guy up. No matter what, he's probably going to be drunk when he walks out. You get him in this car. Whatever you have to tell him, short of whooping his ass and putting him in there, make sure he gets in that car. And anywhere he wants to go, for as long as he wants to go, you take him. You drop him off. You come back. We get our equipment out. You get paid. They put a few things in his car. I'm assuming cameras and microphones, if I had to guess. He's got his picture. He goes to this certain certain bar. And sure enough, parked out front. After waiting about two hours, guy comes staggering out. Guess what, buddy? You don't realize it. But literally, the hundredth person to leave this bar tonight, and you get a free limo ride home anywhere you want to go. Hell yeah, I was going to call a cab. Opens the door, he hops in. He said, anywhere I want to go. He said, anywhere you want to go, you got me for the night. Take me here, blah, 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 which was the bad side of town, to buy things you would buy on the bad side of town. And he bought these things. Well, next thing you know, he goes a little further down, stop the car. The window rolls down, and... A lady that hangs out on the bad side of town. Next thing you know, she gets in the limousine. And they're riding around, riding around. Keep in mind, he's got a privacy divider up at this point. And uh, they're riding around, riding around, you know, just doing his job. And they finally drop him off at his, his house. And they leave. He says, man, this is awesome, brother. Thank you and all this stuff. Well, calls his private investigator buddy that hired him. Said, I'm done. I dropped him off here. He said, bring your car back and you'll get paid. Two weeks later, he calls him back. Says, hey, I need you to run down to Atlanta. Pick a client up at the airport. Tell him whatever you got to tell him. Take him anywhere he wants to go. Same story. It come to find out, he said, I quit doing limousine jobs for hire and became basically this guy the, for the private investigator worked for him just privately driving a limo. It was probably the coolest story ever. And I couldn't find out. And I bumped into this guy several years later. And it's just crazy the people you meet in the car business. And now every time I see a limo, that's the first thing that pops in my head is old Jim. A funny side story, the, the kid that bought the limousine, he actually came down with his grandparents. His grandparents dropped him off to get it. He's probably 25, 26 years old. And he, he paid me for this limousine. I showed him how the air ride worked on it and all that stuff. And we zipped it up the road. And, and I mean, he's a short guy, you know? And I mean, he's over here driving this thing. He's just smiling ear to ear. And I had it raised all the way up, obviously, as we we're driving around town. We pulled to a red light and there were several people standing at the crosswalks and things like that. And I said, hit switches. And he goes, 
switches. I'm like, I smack him and he just, psh, just lay that old caddy on the frame right there. And everybody's looking, boy, he's smiling ear to ear. He couldn't stand. He goes, yeah, this is me. I need this. Psh. Going, we bring it on back to the warehouse and we're doing the paperwork. And I love when people get excited, like truly excited. I think that's why I love selling classic cars because this kid was all over stuff. So I literally could tell him, I need the price of this car in your soul. And he was still signed up. He was just, he was ready and he was just smiling and he's actually going to take it to the beach. He was leaving my place and going straight to the beach with this thing. And I told him, so I showed him the paperwork and just like usual, you know, turn around backwards, classic car salesman style. Take my pen and point this, 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 and this. And obviously it's sold as is. There's no warranty on 42 year old Cadillac limousines. And I can't be responsible for any illegitimate children that are made because of this here automobile, sir. He laughed. He goes, oh, now, come on. He literally texted me that night he made it to the beach. He said, man, I love this thing. Of course, keep in mind, you got a Cadillac that's almost 22 feet long. This thing, this riding on air. So obviously it's like a magic carpet ride anyway. He texted me back the next week. He's sending me pictures of this thing sitting on the strand, driving up and down the strip with this thing. He goes, man, I had the time of my life in that car. And I was back in Virginia with it. And I love that. Like the old caddy limo, you know, gets them every time. Autotempest.com is the fastest and most powerful way to shop for your next car. They compile the results from all the major listing sites into one place. In fact, they just added another one, Facebook Marketplace. Just like they've always let you do with Craigslist, now you can search Facebook Marketplace nationally at the same time. No more typing in cities and adding your search radius and all that stuff. They put all the results into one place and I love them for that. We appreciate their support of VinWiki and CarTrek and everything that we do here, but honestly, it's where I start most of my mornings looking for whatever's gonna fill the next garage spot here. So check them out now at the link in the description below to find your next car. Autotempest.com, all the cars, one search.